Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. On the last podcast on the go, you caught me out in the countryside forgetting my charger, which it's back charging in the garage where I left the charger. And it's been doing that uh, for the past couple days. But when I was telling you all about the issues that I have, that the steering wheel is not responding to any buttons. Also, there's an issue with the highway assistance and the adaptive cruise control you said maybe to disconnect the 12 volt battery. So that's what we're doing today on the podcast. Come along to see if it works and fixing any of the problems or if I'll still have to stop in Wichita, Kansas on my way out to Colorado for one of the only VinFast service centers in the country. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. All right, so the VinFast has been charging for maybe a day or so now. Um, maybe less, but it started at 6%. And it is at 48% right now with an expected range of 128 miles and 33 hours remaining until 80%. I wonder what that is if we put it till 20%. I mean, sorry, 100%, 20% more. 57 hours. I'd love to start my road trip with 100% and then just see what happens. Although I don't think that is necessary because my first stop should be Franklin's charging in Little Rock, Arkansas, which will be fun because Kyle has been there and they have a lineup of different EV chargers. So maybe I could do a little podcast with JT there. All right. So now let's see if we can fix the problems that come up with the charging. First, I'm going to stop charging the VinFast and then I'll see what errors pop up. And then once we unplug the battery and or disconnect the 12 volt battery and then reconnect it after letting it sit for maybe five minutes. See if these same errors come up. What do y'all think it's gonna be? This is how you, this is all the noises. Highway assist fault service requested is the error coming up. Next it should be intelligent speed adaptation fault. Error coming up, both saying service required. So those are the two big ones. But like I said, nothing happens when I use anything on the steering wheel, even the call button, the voice button, the source for any of that. And then I already know that none of these buttons should work that control speed because that's what happens. You can also see these sensors here are part of the safety. Under the hood of the VinFast, or in the frunk, as you might say, there is the 12 volt battery access. So we have disconnected the negative uh, connection on the battery just like everyone said I even saw someone do this online he had a really funny video so now we wait and see if this fixes any of our problems we have reset the battery left it unplugged for about five minutes or so and now let's see okay the back wiper just came on okay Tire pressure monitoring system fault. Cooling system fault. Interesting. Okay, so these are two new, <laughs> two new problems um, that didn't exist before we disconnected the batteries. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's at least mm -hmm. responding to mm -hmm. the steering wheel. So that's good. What about if I try to I won't press any of those buttons because that would stop the filming. But what about source? <gasps> yes. Okay. So this is wonderful. Okay. The, resetting the 12 volt battery, disconnecting the negative and reconnecting after a minute does seem to fix these settings for how long. I'm not sure we will have to see. Of course, we've added these two, but as I know with the VinFast, sometimes errors come up and then they go away. So I'm just going to take this around the block come back and plug it in again in the garage and see if anything anything happens along the way. Hello, mom. Thanks for joining me in the VinFast and for having all those tools set up for when I arrived to disconnect the 12 volt battery. You asked if it worked. 
it did seem to work, but there's two more errors coming up. So tire pressure monitoring and what's the other one? Cooling system fault. Okay, well, we've got to work on those two. But I was proud of the way you removed the battery and put it back in. Thank you. All right. After heading out on another errand and turning the car off when I locked it, quote unquote off. Oh, well, it didn't have all the same errors that it had before, but one just came on with lane keep assist fault. So, and then it went away. I think this is a bit of the VinFast way, which is we'll glitch and then we'll, f we'll finish that up and maybe we'll find a new one in a minute, but it does seem like those went away. So let's continue on this errand, head back home, plug it in and wrap this up. And I'll keep an update of the next time I get in, if there are any more errors before this road trip, but it's looking like I might not have to go to the service center, which might alter my path out to Colorado. I am joined by our guest, Honey the Pug, who I will now put down because I think she prefers to be on the ground rather than in my arms. Okay, so it seems like disconnecting the 12 volt battery does solve some problems. Specifically, what I'm most impressed by is that now the steering wheel buttons work. So that's great. It seems to reset all the circuits, literally let all of the energy drain out, all the electricity that's going through and let the car reset a little bit. It did typical VinFast things where new errors came up, but then maybe five seconds later, they went away, didn't reappear on the drive. So now what I'm gonna do is call VinFast service center and see if that software update that they were going to give me while I was there that would take three to four hours is really that essential. If I could get it over the air, which I don't think is possible uh, and just get some more information about that, because now it seems like I might not have to go to Wichita, Kansas, although I do appreciate everyone's suggestions that you left in the comments for things that I could do while passing through and waiting for that update. But if I have a fix, I might as well carry through on the straightest path or actually the path with the best charging because I was shaping it around Wichita. Okay, y'all joining you back from the podcast studio, no longer in the driveway with honey or my mom, although it's great that you got to meet both of them. So as you saw, disconnecting the 12 volt battery and then reconnecting it did solve those problems for me. This is a universal hard reset for EVs. Like I said, I was reading articles about it and I don't think enough people know about it, although, of course, y'all know about it because you were the ones in the comments telling me about it. Shout out to everyone. I know that I saw Diane say it. Thank you, Diane. And it worked for me, which I'm really grateful because I have to drive a long way, even if it's just to get to Wichita to fix that, which it's now fixed, of course. But driving on the highway, cruise control? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely necessary. And then the highway assistance, that's one of the things that I really like about the VenFast. So to have both of those is going to take uh, a lot of stress off of the driver, who is me. Unfortunately, Rafiki just will not get his driver's license, so he won't be helping me. On the other hand, he will be helping me make the out of spec motoring video that will come from the long road trip out to Colorado. So stay tuned for that. But throughout the drive, I'll be updating you all with podcasts about how my trip with the VenFast is going. So feel free to stay tuned. I did, as you saw, wonder if this meant that I didn't have to go through Wichita. I didn't have to go get that software update and go to the service center. So first off, I looked at the routes out to Colorado, and this is still the best route, really, that I saw through Wichita for charging. So I have that all mapped out, and I'll be taking all the stats along the way in my Google Sheets tab that I have going and um, have that all planned out. So everyone knock on some wood that it goes well for me. Send me some EV road trip luck, although um, I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I also was curious, okay, about the software update. So I called the VinFast Service Center because in Wichita. One, there's no VinFast Service Centers in Tennessee. This is the, the one that is on the way out, which is out to Colorado, which is convenient. And there's some across the country. You can look at another podcast. I showed the map of the VinFast Service Centers. But uh, I called to be like, okay, how important is the software update? I have software 10 and the, the next software that's going to come out from VinFast soon, TBD, if it's available by the time I get to Wichita, but that's version 13 that is going to be the newest, but I can at least get 12 from the service center software version 12. And he was saying that you know, it's probably, it's going to get rid of hopefully how glitchy things are, you know, all these errors coming up. He's like, at least it'll hopefully work to solve that. 
And no, Zenfast does not do over the air software updates. And he told me this could be a three to four hour event, a software update in Wichita. So they're going to give me a loaner and I have to kill some time, which I appreciate people's suggestions in the comments below. Please continue to suggest things to do in Wichita. I love coffee shops. I have a dog. I like to learn things about the places that I go to. I love art and walking. Um, so any cool streets even would love to walk down and see cool architecture or learn some history. So please, I'm sure I can Google it, but I would love your input. So yeah, I am going to get this software update additionally because I'm taking it out to Colorado and we're going to test it. Yay. And it should have the most up-to-date software I can possibly get. Will I go back through Wichita and get it updated again uh, with version 13 or whatever is available by the time I come back from Colorado? I don't know. I don't know. Three to four hours waiting is a long time, but uh, you know, I do it, I do it for the good of the research. So um, okay. That's really all. Thanks for coming through and seeing this podcast. Hopefully you now can try disconnecting and reconnecting your 12 volt battery through the negative. It's not that hard. Get a wrench, unscrew the nut, disconnect it, um, and then put it back on after all the electricity is drained out and your car has had a minute to just not think so hard. We all kind of need that. Let me know if it helped. I know it has helped a lot of y'all in the past. It is a universal EV reset that a lot of us do on the out of spec team. And thanks for reminding me. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned with the out of spec podcast. I'll, like I said, I'll be updating you along the way of the road trip. Wish me luck. Stay charged, drive safe, and I'll see you next time on the next episode. Bye.